ஹலோ எவ்ரிவன் வெல்கம் டு தி டுவெண்ட்டி செகண்ட் வீடியோ ஆன் ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் சர்டிஃபிகேஷன் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் வேரியஸ் எஸ்டிமேஷன் ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் சாம்பிளிங் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் இன் தி ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் ஸ்டடி கைட் தெர் இஸ் எ கிளியர் மென்ஷன் அபவுட் தீஸ் டாபிக்ஸ் ஸோ பேசிக் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் அபவுட் வாட் ஆர் ஆல் தி வேரியஸ் எஸ்டிமேஷன் ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் விச் ஆர் அவைலபிள் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் அண்ட் ஹவு வி கேன் டூ சாம்பிளிங் with in snowflake is very important from the exam point of view when it comes to estimation functions what is an estimation function as the name suggest these functions are very helpful to estimate some of the values so estimations is of any type say i want to estimate the value which is going to be returned i want to estimate what is the percentage of the value which is already available i want to estimate what what is the total number of distinct values which is available for a specific column in a table i want to estimate what is the specific number of counts so there are lot of ways by which we can do the estimations predominantly snowflake supports four different types of estimations one is the cardinality estimation other is the similarity estimation other is the frequency estimation and another one is the percentile estimation so what these things are again cardinality estimation is all about estimating the distinct values for a column in a table similarity estimation is all about estimating the approximate similarity between two or more data sets say i am having two tables table a and table b i want to understand the similarity between those two tables then these estimations are very helpful for you frequency estimation will be very helpful in estimating approximate frequent values in the data set try to understand this and finally the percentile estimation is helpful in estimating approximate percentile values in the data sets so so far snowflake is providing us with these four sorts of estimations now each and every estimation comes up with lots and lots of native snowflake functions first we are going to discuss about the cardinality estimation functions snowflake uses hyper log log which is the algorithm to estimate the approximate number of distinct values in a data set so hyper log log is the state of the art cardinality estimation algorithm capable of estimating distinct cardinalities for trillions of rows with an average relative error of few percent so now try to understand say if i want to find the distinct values of a column on a table for a bigger table right say a table is having trillions of rows so ideal option is how we can do select count of distinct column name from the table name is the ideal way by which we can do if you do so it is an really tiresome and time consuming process but utilizing these sorts of functions will do the work in a very very smaller fraction of time that is mentioned here at the bottom as well if you see snowflake like recommend using hyper log log whenever the inputs are potentially large and an approximate result is acceptable meaning this function will return you approximated results only not the proper result so if you are having a very bigger sized table then if you are acceptable with a minimal error then you can very well utilize this hyper log log functions the average relative error of the hyper log log implementation is 1.62 62338 percentage that is the average relative difference to the corresponding count of distinct result so i hope you able to understand this statement properly so there is always a relative error while using this type of estimations since it is not the proper estimation using count of distinct instead it will do the approximation using this hyper log log estimation algorithm with an relative error now how we can do what are all the 
functions which are available these are all the set of functions which are available i am not going to read each of these things please pass the video and understand what the individual functions are hlll is all about hyper log log hlll accumulate hlll combine hlll estimate hlll export and hlll import these are all the various descriptions for each of these things but predominantly we will be utilizing the hlll for the approximation of distinct cardinality and hlll accumulate will skips the final estimation step and returns the hlll state at the end of an aggregation hlll combine used to combine the input states into a single output state hlll estimate will compute the cardinality estimate of hlll state produced by hlll accumulate and hlll combine based on previous two things export converts the log states into a binary format to an object which can be printed and exported as json import will convert the log states from the object format to the binary format so these two are complementary or opposite in nature now moving on to the similarity estimation what are all the similarity estimations which are available in snowflake it utilizes the min hash algorithm for estimating approximate similarity between two or more data sets the min hash scheme compares the sets without computing the intersection or union of the sets which enables efficient and effective estimation so obviously if you want to compare two sets we will be using this jacket similarity coefficient or index that will use this function which is the a intersection b divided by a union b so a and b are two different data sets so what are all the data which are available in conjunction between two data sets divided by the total number of data sets will provide the jacket similarity coefficient that is the widely used one to combine or to understand the similarities between data sets but here that is not the case. here it uses the min hash algorithm to do so however this calculation can consume significant resources at the time and therefore it is not ideal for large data sets what they are trying to say jacket is not ideal for large data sets in contracts the goal of the min hash scheme is to estimate j of a comma b which is the similarity function very quickly without computing the intersection or union now we are going to discuss about the similarity estimation functions which are currently available we are having three different functions for the similarity estimation one is min hash which returns a min hash state combining a min hash array of length k min hash combine will combine two or more min hash states into a single output min hash state finally the approximate similarity or approximate jacket index which returns an estimation of the similarity of the input sets based on their min hash states for better understanding let us take an example so that it can be better understood here you can see two tables mh tab 1 mh tab 2 which contain c1 c2 c3 and then c4 as data now we are inserting different records not mostly the same records 1 2 3 4 four records got inserted into mh tab 1 and then mh tab 2 got inserted with the same first four records and then the final record is a different record so item 6 is different but first four records are same now we can use this function approximate similarity mh right the last function which is mentioned here now we are selecting min hash of 100 comma star from the table 1 and the same min hash of 100 comma star from the table 2 if you see the resultant output you can see the value as 0.79 but it is slightly contradictory there is an error associated to it actually it is 4 divided by 5 right the total number of uh, records is 4 which is matching and total number of union records is 5 so it is 4 divided by which needs to be 0.8 but it returns us with 0.79 this is very very helpful if you are trying to combine two very big tables that is the idea here that is the reason why all these estimation functions are built in so the similarity index for the two tables is approximated to 0.79
moving on to the frequency estimation so what frequency estimation is again it uses the another algorithm which is the space saving algorithm a space and a time efficient way of estimating approximate frequent values in the data set it is implemented through an approx top k family of functions additionally approx top k combined function utilizes the parallel space saving algorithm the percentage of error for this algorithm depends heavily on how skewed the data is and the number of counters used in the algorithm as the data become more skewed more counters are used the output will be more accurate so these four are the functions which are available within the frequency estimation as we discussed earlier approx top k it returns the approximation of frequent values in input approx top k accumulate will skips the final estimation same as we discussed in the previous things and approx top k consume combine will combine both the things in the combine the states between the single output state and finally top k estimate will compute the cardinality estimate for the space saving state produced by the approx top k accumulate and approx top k consume let us take an example for the better understand here you can see we are hearing creating the cts here common table expressions so this is taking the value from here and we are utilizing the flatten to do the flattening on the states so obviously we are taking the data from the states ta table which is having the value in the form of the json and we are calculating the approximate top k for c4 value here so the output will be something like this value of 1 2 3 with the frequency mentioned here so value of 1 is having this much frequency 2 is having this much frequency 3 is having this much amount of frequency moving on to the percentile estimation here we are going to discuss about how the percentile estimation can be calculated again it uses the another algorithm which is the t digest algorithm a space and time efficient way to estimating the percentile values in each data set it is again in implemented through approx percentile family of functions this algorithm is having a relative error so the algorithm has the substantial empirical support but no rigorous proof of any accuracy guarantees that is an important thing to note and these four functions again approx percentile approx percentile accumulate approx percentile combine and approx percentile estimate please go through the descriptions by passing the video now coming to the example here you can see we are creating a table named test table with c1 as integer and we are inserting close to around 11 records since it starts with zero there are 11 records which got inserted into the test table now if you do approx percentile of point Point one from test table, it will return the value of one point five. Now, if you do the similar same thing, approx percentile of point nine nine nine, it returns the value of ten point five. The value returned in this case is higher than any value in the data set. That is something which you need to know. That is very evident as there is a mention about the constant relative error is there with this percentile estimation. at last we are going to discuss about sampling sampling is a pretty evident topic most of you might be aware of sampling how we can do sampling what are all the various methods by which we can sample the data so it returns a subset of rows which are sampled randomly from the specified table as simple as it is if you do limit of i all these things that will use the sampling method only so there are two different sampling methods which are used one is the fraction based other is the fixed size based fraction based returns a sample of a fraction of the table which is specified probability for including the given row we are going to see lot of examples so wait for some time the number of rows returned depends on the size of the table and the requested probability this is the probability based fraction output which is going to be returned out of the sample a seed can be 
specified to make the sampling more deterministic on the other hand the fixed size is the very evident thing where you will specify the number of rows to be sampled out of that specific table which is very evident on the limit function and everything so the exact number of specified rows will be returned unless the table contain the fewer rows as simple as it is these two are the different types sample and table sample are very synonymous and can be used interchangeably that is an important point to note even in the study guide as well there is a mention of sample and table sample both of them are synonyms to each other each other so you can use either sample or you can use either table sample here are some of the examples for fraction based row sampling select star from test table sample 10 if you know sample 10 it returns a sample of the table where each row has 10 percentage probability of being included in the sample as direct it is if you are specifying the number alone it is going to be probability based now again we are trying to use the bernoulli based one 20.3 which returns a sample from the table which each row has 20.3 probability of being included into the sample now for interchangeable option instead of sample the table sample is used but again you can use any of those things moving on here we are using the direct number of 100 it will return the entire table including all rows in the table if you mention 100 number here it will return all rows in the table and then if you return zero here it will return only an empty sample which is going to be the zero sample finally we can very well utilize the seeding option which is mentioned on the top now we are returning a sample system of 3 and seed of 82 returns a sample of the table where each block of rows has 3 percentage probability of being included in the sample and set to to the seed of 82 so this are all various methods of probability based sampling which you can utilize on snowflake moving on to the fixed size sampling which is very very evident here we are specifying rows in difference between the top one and bottom one is the rows command here so here we are specifying sample 10 rows meaning from the test table give me 10 rows actually so it returns a fixed size of 10 rows for each row which is having the min of 1 by 10 by nth of probability of being included in the sample where n is the number of rows in the table again some probability based distributions is happening here but predominantly it will return you 10 rows as the output of this specific fixed size sampling with this we come to end of this video as usual i hope this video has been informative for you please do write lot of comments that will be very helpful for me to enhance and add more contents based on your interest as usual i am going to add all the snowflake documentation links in the description of the video please glimpse through those documentations as well thank you very much for watching this video